Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message, News You Can Use. Let me start with some historic news. The official opening of Duke Research and Discovery at RTP, Duke's first facility in the Research Triangle Park, has just begun. Our expansion into RTP was precipitated by a recent success in acquiring federal research grants and contracts, totaling more than $600 million to fund vaccine development. This newly renovated facility is now home for, to School of Medicine researchers from the Duke Human Vaccine Institute, as well as members of the Departments of Surgery, Immunology, Pediatrics, and Medicine, all working on a variety of projects focused on infectious disease research, host immunity, transmission, and vaccine development. This is very exciting news. And a special thank you to the Associate Dean, Tom Denny, as well as so many others who led to the development of this facility and the move to RTP. Now on to COVID updates. As of Wednesday, the overall full compliance rate for COVID vaccination among faculty and staff in the School of Medicine is 97.5%. And when you account for individuals who have received at least one dose, we're even closer to a complete compliance with just 125 people in the School of Medicine still needing to be vaccinated. And just a reminder that the deadline for compliance is September 21st at 10 a.m. As of Thursday, 95% of university faculty and staff are fully compliant, having received either full vaccination or an exemption, as well as 94% of Duke University Hospital and 92.8% across Duke Health. On a national scale, as of Wednesday, 62.5% of the total U.S. population has received at least one dose of that, the vaccine, and that number is a bit lower in North Carolina at 59%. Thank you to everyone who has been vaccinated. Vaccination continues to be critical intervention for the health and well-being of everyone, especially our children who are not yet eligible, as well as the elderly and those individuals underlying health issues who may be vaccinated but remain at risk for disease. Data continues to indicate that the vaccine prevents severe illness and hospitalization in the vast majority of the population. A study recently out of the CDC demonstrated that for those under the age of 75, the vaccine remains 95% effective at preventing hospitalization in the setting of a breakthrough infection. And if over the age of 75, there's a decline, although the effectiveness is still at 80% in preventing hospitalizations. This decline with age contributed to the recent recommendation under consideration by the CDC for third vaccination eight months after a second dose. If the FDA authorizes and ACIP recommends a booster dose, people who are first to receive the COVID vaccination when they became available early 2021 are likely to be the first people eligible for a booster. And this includes healthcare providers, residents of long-term care facilities, and older adults. Currently, following CDC recommendations, Duke Health is offering a third dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine to individuals who are moderately to severely immunocompromised. Duke Health is also preparing to offer boosters to others pending the FDA independent evaluation and ACIP meetings, which are scheduled for mid-September. Unfortunately, the number of COVID cases, hospitalizations, and serious illness due to COVID remain high locally and nationally, and it's still unclear that we have reached a plateau. Here's where we stand in North Carolina. There are more than 6,200 new cases of COVID and more than 3,800 individuals currently hospitalized across the state. The Duke Health System is, is continuing to see an increase in the number of individuals hospitalized with COVID at approximately 140 patients across the system. While vaccination is the most important thing we can do, due to the need to control the current surge, we are following the additional recommendations that include wearing masks while inside all Duke buildings, including classrooms, wearing a mask outdoors when in a group, and eating outdoors when possible. In large-scale modeling projections from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation out of the University of Washington, universal masking plus increased vaccination over time markedly decreases the projected duration and extent of the current surge as compared to vaccination with decreased or no masking. And in fact, we are seeing that play out at Duke. Since implementing these new guidelines last week in response to the spike in students testing positive, Duke reported a marked reduction in the number of students positive for COVID from 349 two weeks ago to 125 last week. And as of yesterday, down to 105 students, less than 1% of our student body in isolation due to positive testing. Finally, you should have received a message on Wednesday from the School of Medicine about flu vaccination. 
Vaccination or an improved exemption is mandated by the school as well as the health system. And Duke Health will begin offering the flu vaccine on September 30th. Duke employees can also get their flu vaccine from their primary care provider or in a local pharmacy. And the deadline for compliance with the flu vaccination policy is November 9th. Finally, let me end by acknowledging the 20th anniversary of 9-11 tomorrow. This weekend, I will join all of you and so many others across the nation to remember the precious lives lost, to honor the courageous heroes who saved lives, and to lift up the survivors and their family. Through this tragedy, so painful still today, we all seek a future without such acts of hatred and filled with hope. With that, thank you to everyone for all that you're doing and have a restful weekend.